Hi, everybody. Welcome to the lecture. Today we're going to be talking about um, Kevin Young's book, To Repel Ghosts, uh, the remix. Um, and this is a book that is inspired by the work of the famous graffiti art artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, who was the subject of the film you guys watched for the previous session, um, That Radiant Child, the film by Tamara Davis. And I thought it was important to watch the film first, just because if you're not familiar with Jean-Michel Basquiat's work, if you've never really been asked to like encounter any sort of graffiti um, within the context of not just of your daily life or being out on the street, but in like an art context, um, you know, I, this has been some 30 years now, so you might not have been familiar with him. So now at least you've had some introduction to his work. Now what you're going to get is basically an ekphrastic exploration of his work by Kevin Young in his book. And Kevin Young has done this before. He's done some stuff um, with um, Jelly Roll, the singer. He's done um, some stuff with the blues. He's very much, um, apart from being the poetry editor at The New Yorker, he's been um, very interested in taking up prominent uh, black artists and sort of composing poems as an homage, ex exploring their sort of art, their artistic aesthetic through his own work as a way to kind of celebrate, interrogate, um, and just sort of re-examine and bring back to life the work of others. And that's very much what we see going on um, in this piece. Um, our purposes in reading this book, just by way of introduction, um, I want to say just a couple quick things. Um, the book is quite a bit more experimental than some of the pieces we've encountered before. And I think initially it might be reasonable that you could have um, maybe just a little bit of a problem sort of getting into it because the book doesn't really um, give you as much uh, per se uh, in terms of helping you along in terms of what it's trying to say, what it's trying to accomplish. Um, and so for that reason, it can be, um, you know, a little, a little challenging, I think, to encounter it in a course like this where we're not spending a great deal of time with a particular writer um, to really, you know, get a sense of um, what they're doing and what they're up to. But what I will say is if you go into reading this book with an open mind and you sort of have it in mind that, look, you are reading some poetry that is taking its inspiration from an art form that is inherently um, shot through with popular culture. So Jean-Michel Basquiat is constantly, he's painting over, you know, literal physical space in the urban world. He's also painting in it, you know, logos and pieces of popular culture and sayings and um, iconography, both present and past. He sometimes does caricatures, sometimes um, does uh, really more straight on sort of prints and presses. And so any work that really wants to be examining Jean-Michel Basquiat has to kind of do not just write poetry, normal poetry, poetry that's like poetry you read, but that tries to adopt a way of speaking, a uh, tone of voice, um, a word choice, uh, a palette that matches the thing it's looking at. And that can be hard. Not to, it's not a question of can you describe what you're looking at, but can you describe what you're looking at and make the voice sound the way it sounds? Can you sound like it? And so if you look at a painting by Basquiat, for instance, um, let's take a look at one together. a Cadillac Moon, which is one of the early pieces by Kevin Young. Got me? Okay. Which is right here, which is a painting that is somewhat inspired by an early experience in Basquiat's life where he was basically like run over as a little kid and had to have his spleen removed. And so you see the cars, the car up on blocks, the sort of be the car that hits you as opposed to the ambulance. You've got the driver's licenses sort of things over here. You've got these phrases of ah and oh and all this headlights. You get a sense of real chaos and collision and a real sort of, you know, um, sort of kind of what elemental um, but piecemeal and uh, experiential sort of 
representation of that experience is. You've got the claw marks here. You've got what looks like paint smudges. You've got headlights coming at you. You've got Aaron, right? Maybe the name of the guy that hit him here. And so when you are sitting down, and I, if I were to ask you, hey, write a poem about this painting, you might sort of, you know, not know where to start. You might start describing something that you see, but really it doesn't have to be as simple as all that. If you look at um, the poem, which is on page 10 of our book, you'll see that what we're really trying to do for Kevin Young is enact the feeling of this. So if you listen to this, let's listen to Cadillac Moon um, together. And if you have your book, open it up to pages 10, 11, and 12, and let's listen. Uh, this is Cadillac Moon. I'm going to take a sip of coffee here, so I'm losing my voice. All right. Crashing again, Basquiat sends fenders and letters headlong into each other. The future. Fusion. Ah! Big bang, the big apple, atoms behind him, no sirens in sight. His career of careening since at six, playing stickball, a car stole his spleen. Blindsided, move along, folks. Nothing to see here. Driven, those two caddies colliding, biting the dust he's begun to snort. Hit, run, red cross, the pill pale ambulance inside out. He hitched to the hospital. Joyride, hot wired. Oh, the rush before the wreck. Each Cadillac, Titanic, an iceberg that's met its match. Cabin flooded like an engine, drawing even dark shine from below deck. Flats fix, chop shop, body work while you wait. In situ, the spleen or lean interior view removed. Given Gray's anatomy by his mother for recovery. 151, reflection of spleen, spleen turned forwards and to the right like pages of a book. Basquiat pulled into orbit with tide, the moon gold as a tooth, a hubcap gleaming, gleaned, shine swimming for land, somewhere solid to spin his own orbit. Now, if you think about that, um, a number of things go on in this painting, and it's why it's important to have seen the movie a bit, because if you don't know a little bit about Basquiat's life, you're going to miss some of this stuff. Basically, what happens here is you see initially um, Kevin Young work through the like kind of try to narrate the moments of his actually being hit. Just chaotic, short, choppy sentences. Um, from there, which you actually gets rather interesting, you get, first of all, textual representation of that ah, it's a little out of focus, but you can see it there, which appears in the painting. So he's literally reproducing an image in his poem of something that is produced by Basquiat in his painting. Um, you get a little bit of sense of the event itself, that he removes his spleen, that he's playing stickball. So you get a little bit of a characteristic description, but it's rather buried in all the language. Um, you get beyond that <clears throat> some autobiographical details, driven, the dust he's begun to snort. I mean, here we see um, Kevin Young moving forward in time because he knows Basquiat eventually takes up a bit of a drug habit. He can sort of mix a reference into that here, even in a way that sort of is multi-textural. It's like saying, I can see Basquiat as a kid, but I can also, as a kid, knowing what I know about him as an adult. So when you look at a given object, a historical object, an art object, you can look at it at the moment it was made. But if you're living in a later time, you can also bring to it something of what you're looking at now, or what you now know. Um, from here, we get some details. Cadillacs compared to Titanic's. We get that the cars are taken to a chop shop. And the chop shop is a segue into thinking about Basquiat's experience because he basically goes to surgery. And while he's in surgery, having his spleen removed, his mother gives him the textbook, Gray's Anatomy. If you're familiar with the show, maybe our, our, our um, science students in the class will be familiar with the book. If you're not familiar with the actual book, um, it's a rather extraordinary um, anatomical, drawing book that's been like, was sort of like the gold standard for uh, and, and Tom, anatomy and physiology, just in terms of showing you musculature, um, muscle, like muscle groups and skeletal groups, parts of the body, these really detailed and um, intricate drawings. Um, and so for instance, um, just to give you a sense, you can, you can pull some of these up by Googling them. Um, but just to give you a really quick preview here, see here, you get this very sort of visceral and wonderfully detailed um, images uh, 
the brain of, of different parts of the body. Here's the, the kind of iconic uh, cover of Grey's Anatomy. And so just think about the interesting moment here that happens in, in Basquiat's life. Here, maybe someone who, this could be a moment where he becomes an artist. He studies these pictures and he's like, wow, look at all this stuff inside me. Look at the way it can be represented out on the page. If in a way, uh, Grey's Anatomy is a work of ekphrasis, right? It's like translating something in the physical world to a description in another. In the same way, what this moment prompts for Basquiat is an entry into the idea that maybe I'm interested in this whole drawing thing. Maybe it's a way to work through some of this stuff. The point in all this is to say, and I'm not going to do this for our, all the poems or even any more of them, but it's just to say, like, when you encounter one of these Kevin Young poems initially, don't be tripped up by the language. Cultural references, sometimes he's doing a little jazz sort of rhyming um, and rhythmic stuff that can sort of is somewhat there to entertain, somewhat there to distract, and somewhat there to give you some sense that Basquiat and Kevin Young are always doing collages with their work, right? A poem in this world isn't just a thing between a speaker and a listener. It's a thing that happens that is permeated by all the elements of our world, art, culture, music, drugs, sex, um, rock and roll, all that stuff is mixed in. And so in Kevin Young's book, he's basically trying to do Basquiat justice by doing what Basquiat would do if he was to write a poem about his own work. That's the goal. So this is something we call mimesis which is basically don't write about the thing you're looking at, write in the voice of the thing you're looking at. And if you can sort of approach the work in that way, it's a little more experimental, a little more theoretical, but I think hopefully we'll explain a little bit why Kevin Young's poems look the way they do. For some of them, you'll see that they are paired to actual paintings. What I would say is if you're looking, if as you're reading through some of these poems um, and you're getting one that's interesting to you, start Googling some titles, you'll find them out there. You can put them all on class uh, board for you, but if there is a poem or two you respond to, definitely find some of those images out there because I think they will present some interesting opportunities for further analysis as well. Okay, gonna call it good for there. Hope you enjoyed the film, hope you enjoyed the book, and then we'll talk more about it next time.